Hello, this is Sam Gerrans from samgerrans.com. Today is Tuesday, November 14th, 2023. And since it's Tuesday, we're looking again at this book. Hope you can see that. Propaganda, the formation of men's attitudes. And today uh, we're going to go through uh, the chapter which is called The Socio-Political Effects of Propaganda. Now, that's a bit of a clickbait. That'll get them in, I'm sure. Um, anyway, as per usual, what I'm going to do is read most of this onto most of it onto YouTube. Uh, some portion of it will uh, will be only for my paid subscribers on Substack, but it's only about 20 minutes, something like that. And at some point, I'll open that all up anyway. But it's just a way of uh, allowing some people to help me, uh, and a few people do. So thanks to them. And uh, what we'll do is I want to get through this whole chapter. This whole, in fact, is a, a major section. It's almost 60 pages. But what I'm going to do is, uh, as we did last time, is basically uh, just read extended excerpts t- to give you an idea of this. Now, again, this is the book, Propaganda, The Formation of Men's Attitudes by Jackie Lull. And he's, as it says here, the author of the Technological Society. And as I say each week, pretty much, the reason why I'm doing this is to uh, help people understand that, firstly, that pretty much everything is propaganda that, that you're consuming. Uh, secondly, to understand, in a, to get a, a sense of how to pick it apart in your own mind. For me, um, I mean, I happen to have a professional background in it as well my only interest in propaganda is is a bit like being a chef who goes to a restaurant i mean you just want to see how they've made the souffle and you, that's that's the way that i look at it um i assume i assume everything that comes out of the any government any newspaper um any mainstream basically avatar or character uh, I see it in terms of a pageant. It it doesn't it doesn't mean, of course, that every single person has been schooled in every single thing that they say. It doesn't matter what they say because even those that don't understand what they're doing, in fact, in a way, even especially those who don't understand what they're doing, they're just repeating. They are basically repeating the propaganda that they've already downloaded, and you can see you. It's not that you have to control the. Uh, micromanage it so much as to guide and control the context uh, who gets promoted who doesn't get promoted this is the way it works and um, I'm sure Ilul would would agree with this that it, he's not inveighing uh, as far as I, as my reading of him goes uh, against propaganda per se he sees propaganda and I would agree with this as a necessary corollary to technique Technique is basically modernity. Technique is basically a pragmatic, um, materialistic religion which is geared to more for you. That's kind of it. This is something that uh, the men of you know, Cicero wouldn't have understood this, so the men of you know, antiquity wouldn't have understood this, medieval man wouldn't have, under- wouldn't have understood this. It's only something which is, um, seems to make sense to to men who have been degraded. And I, I know that we've all been told how amazing we are and that we've reached the the, um, the the summit of what's possible because you have an iPhone. But from a medieval and uh, position and from the position of an educated man of, of late antiquity, we are barbarians, essentially. Okay, we, we are ignorant and almost worse than that, we're incurious. And we are, from a a Vedic point of view, uh, now a world civilization of Shudra or Sudras, the the plebeian caste. Uh, We have uh, excluded, eradicated and persecuted, actually, quality wherever it's been found for well a, a considerable amount of time. And now all that's left are essentially... Um, stomachs on legs all right that's where we are now um this is the discipline you have if you don't like it you just have to learn to put up with it you know we all have our cross to bear well this is ours however propaganda is a necessary part of this it's not that evil men uh, sit in smoke-filled rooms discussing how to spin up your mind exactly although that does happen it's more that because your mind is not your own, because living under technique is so ghastly, 
you have an inbuilt an, um, an unavoidable desire for propaganda because propaganda is the one of the palliatives by which living under technique becomes seemingly bearable. This is the way that it works. Okay, now, from my point of view, I would argue that the ruling elites, um, we do still have ruling elites. Um, they're not the aristocracy of times gone by. They are... I would say a fairly degraded um, remnant uh, or, or almost a caricature of a, a merchant class. So th this is uh, international money and all of that. Some of them are related in some ways to, to aristocracy, but I would say that it's really, an, it's really a usurping ruling caste and... Um, they themselves are degraded too. I call them the kings of detritus because this is all that they're really able to to rule over. Um, and that's why things, to some extent, are going the way that they are. But um, I, I, I'm not here to discuss that so much as to discuss today propaganda. So that's what we're going to do. Now, I'm going to start on page 193 and we've got about 60 pages to get through. So what I'm going to do is just, <coughs> excuse me, call out the... Um, the, the chapter headings and so on, and give you a taste of this. My purpose in this is, uh, if nothing else, to acquaint you with uh, Jacques Lord. And my recommendation is to, to read this book and to read his other book, The, um, the Technological Society, because then you have a, a really good, even if you just read those two books, you'll have a really good understanding of why things are as ghastly as they are. Okay, so to begin... The socio-political effects. Uh, subheading propaganda and ideology. Further subheading the traditional relationship. I have to say before I start, Ilul is a tedious, boring writer, and he was writing. He wrote this, as I say, most weeks in the early 1960s, uh, but it's either prescient or is still relevant. Um, but he was writing as an academic and an intelligent man for other intelligent men when intelligent men could be fi found in academia not so much anymore it's all kind of green-haired women and midwits and ideologically starched um, apparatchiki but in his day there, there were still intelligent men and he was writing for these sorts of people anyway i'm going to skip quite a lot jump in here Lenin and Hitler found a world in which the process of ideological expansion was more or less set. But their intervention in this domain would be the same as their intervention in all others. What actually was Lenin's, and therefore Hitler's, great innovation? It was to understand that the modern world is essentially a world of means. That what is most important is to utilise all the means at a man's disposal, and that ends and aims have been completely transformed by the profusion of means. Now, dull, isn't it? However, what he means by this is that basically all's fair. Whatever works, pragmatism. This is a, a feature, it is an expression, it is a characteristic of technique itself. Propaganda in its modern form is itself, um, as I say, mm, not only necessary to the technological society which in which we live, but it's actually a feature of it. So it, whatever works is to be used, and it is to be used dispassionately to continue. The fact that man in the 19th century was still searching for ends led him to neglect most of the available means, i.e. what he had was some sort of vestigial sense of... Um, I suppose, integrity. Uh, having been disabused of that, it's possible to be much better at the um, technical job of controlling your mind. Lenin's stroke of genius was to see that, in reality, in our 20th century, the ends had come to be secondary to the means, or, in many cases, of no importance at all. You remember the expression, the ends justify the means? But if you have your ends are unimportant, means are uh, the, the the means that you have access to have 
fact, you know, almost no limit. What mattered was primarily to set all available instruments in motion and to push them to their limits. It's almost like power for power's sake. If you look at Kaczynski's analysis of what he calls the leftists, you know, why they want power. They want power because they need power, uh, because essentially to fill the hole within themselves. So it, they don't really have a policy apart from destroying things and staying in power. Moreover, Lenin was carried along by the conviction that such extreme utilisation of all means would, a priori, lead to the establishment of socialist society. The end thus became a postulate that was easily forgotten. That attitude agreed exactly with the aspirations of the average man and with his firm belief in progress. Now, um, Elul summarises the four basic dogma of the technological society that history de uh, that everything is matter that history develops in endless progress that man is naturally good and the aim of man's life is happiness they are this is what you believe you know, everyone believes it this is the world religion doesn't matter what they say they believe that's what they actually believe um this attitude agreed exactly with the aspirations of the average man and with his firm belief in progress. Now, I don't know if you'd be allowed to talk about average men today, if you'd be able to say this. We have to pretend that everyone's amazing. This is why Lenin designed a strategy and a tactic on the political plane. There as elsewhere, he permitted the means to assume first place. I, it is dull, isn't it? This is why I decided to read this. But what he's saying is, is that rather than uh, working from the basis of some great ends that we had to believe in and work towards, uh, Lenin decided, you know what? These people are kind of dumb, and if you just smack them over the head with whatever works, we'll use that and forget about any sort of niceties of ideology. We're just going to use it. We're just going to destroy because destroying is easy. There, as elsewhere, he permitted the means to assume first place. But that led him, on one hand, to modify Marx's doctrine, and on the other, to give the doctrine itself a level of importance secondary to action. What he's saying is, he, who cares about the revolution if you're destroying things? And one of the first things Lenin did when he came to the country uh, that I live in, Russia, was uh, murder Christians, um, destroy churches, and uh, they brought in a, a law which made anti-Semitism in any form punishable by death. Yeah, that's what they did here. Uh, according to Solzhenitsyn, uh, around six, 60 million people were murdered in, in the Soviet Union over this period. You probably don't even know that. Uh, yeah, but your mind will be awash with other people's sufferings, I can assure you. Tactics and development of means then became the principal objects, even of political science. So it doesn't matter what you believe. All that matters is how to make it work. Um, all right, skipping a bit. Hitler modified the National Socialist ideology several times according to the requirements of propaganda. Thus, Hitler and Lenin established an entirely new relationship between ideology and propaganda. But one must not think that Hitler's defeat put an end to that. Actually, it has become more widespread. Now, this was written in 1964, published in English in 64. Just imagine how much more widespread it is now. There is no question that the demonstration was compelling from the point of view of effectiveness. Moreover, the trend launched by Lenin and Hitler touched on all prevailing ideologies. Not some prevailing, no, actually it says all prevailing ideologies. You live in democracy, or you've been told you do, or you've been told that it's a good thing, a righteous thing, a holy thing. You haven't really thought about it, and if you did think about it, you'd realise this is absolute nonsense. But all you have an ideology, let's put it that way, and this, this, this propaganda methodology is applied all, all day long. All of which now exist in connection with propaganda, i.e. live by propaganda, whether one likes it or not. It is no longer possible to turn back. It, only ad adjustments can be made. Now, I just have to say, as I, I, I normally say, I'm not bemoaning this. I'm not arguing against it. Uh, you're not going to find me on the When Enough People Wake Up team. We're not going to be, you know, on this channel memorising the, uh, the Constitution and the Bill of Rights and all this stuff. None of this is possible. 
Um, just on that point, I mean, the Constitution, the Bill of Rights was for a completely different time, a completely different setup. It, it presupposed European peoples living on farms. You don't have that now. Um, why? Uh, why would that? Why would they even work? Also, in a pre technological in a pre-information age okay so and actually on that point that, that it's become its own type of propaganda I, it amuses me to watch people kind of ro roll this out as if this is the the fix to all the problems or more democracy is the fix to all the problems there is no fix to any of this it, it's only going to get worse and worse and worse until everybody eventually gets basically i would imagine i uh, well, I mean, clearly what they're doing is they're rolling out methods of um, of of murder with plausible deniability attached, you know, the whole COVID thing, etc., which will be back. But we've been distracted in the meantime to quickly get rid of half a million um, men in Ukraine. Basically, the whole flower of Ukrainian youth has been genocided. Uh, but now your mind will have been moved on to something else completely. That was really important for a while. And then before that, it was really important that you didn't stand within 15 feet of granny if there was, you know, an hour and a month or full moon or something else had happened. But you're, it's much better if you just assume that your mind isn't your own, because it probably isn't. I mean, see if you're watching this, you're in a better position than most people. But the, the reason why it's so difficult to talk to people or to, to understand, you know, why is everybody so dumb? It's because they've had a trillion dollars worth of pro propaganda directed at them. And there is nothing that you can do. Unfortunately, there's nothing you can do to make them wake up. And this whole when enough people wake up thing, it, it just, uh, it's, it's ridiculous. I wish people would just drop it. It's so ludicrous. But anyway, I suppose people want... We say in Russian, Nadezhdu Marad Pasliden. It means um, hope dies last. But I mean, just on, on that point, and I have said this a few times, if, if you were a member of the ruling elite, like 0.000001%, uh, I, I guess you would promote the idea of when enough people wake up. Because it sounds plausible, although it's completely impossible. Um, but it must be, you know, they must really get a kick out of watching everyone say this, especially, you know, seeing as they're such a tiny minority. Okay, the new, the new relationship. Propaganda's task is less and less to propagate ideologies. It now obeys its own laws and becomes autonomous. Propaganda no longer obeys an ideology. The propagandist is not and cannot be. Moreover, he cannot believe he cannot believe in the ideology he must use in his propaganda. He is merely a man at the service of a party, a state, or some other organization, i.e. e.g. a client, and his task is to ensure the efficiency of that organization. He no more needs to share the official ideology than the prefect of the French government, or sorry, than the prefect of a French department needs to share the political doctrines of the national government. If the propagandist has any political conviction, he must put it aside in order to be able to use some popular mass ideology. Now, a lot of people, I, I've realised recently that one of the uh, greatest weapons in the hands of the people who control you uh, is your incredulity and it's natural you see the thing is you think to yourself you know i would never do that no you wouldn't because you're not a psychopath <laughs> and nor am i but the people who are good at uh, propaganda i mean i wasn't very good at it i was good with clients but i i, I didn't have a taste for the actual work um, and when i worked out what it was uh, I mean, just on a personal note, I mean, I had two particular clients and I, I liked one of them and I was OK with the other one. But I knew that there might come a time where I, I might have to work for who knows who. And so I planned my escape out of that out of that area, even though the money was very good. Um, but but looking at the people who do best in that in that area, um, often women are very good at it. Um, not always, but often. But the people I noticed who got right to the top of the food chain in that area um, were quite clearly psychopathic. And they don't care. I did care. 
I am, you know, it matters. Truth matters to me. And obviously I was in the wrong job. But I, I was there long enough to get a really good taste for it and to meet other people in other companies and to see how this all works. Skipping a bit. More and more, the propagandist is a technician using a keyboard of material, media and psychological techniques. And in the midst of all that, ideology is only one of the incidental and interchangeable cogs. Okay? They care that you believe it. They don't believe it. You're just the grist. You see, you're just basically, like you have cannon fodder. Well, you're just ideology fodder. You'll be, you'll, you can be made to believe anything, essentially. So, let the client, client pay and claim your mind, because it's not yours. All right, 202. We're moving on quite a few pages here. Effects on the structure of public opinion. Skipping a bit. On the one hand, as I have already shown, the questions that propaganda takes on itself cease to be controversial. Truths are pronounced that do not bear discussion. They are believed or not believed. I mean, like, Putin's evil. Putin's unprovoked war of aggression. Um, masks stop COVID. All that kind of stuff. And what's it now? Hamas is... Uh, I don't think they're saying Hamas is unprovoked war of aggression against Israel quite, but I think I, I haven't kept up with it, but I, I'm sure they've got something similar. At the same time, interpersonal communications cease. Isn't that interesting? Interpersonal communications cease. So the more propaganda you get, like you think it's called, you know, you're, you're plugged in and you're, you're communicating with people, especially now you've got social media and so on. Actual interpersonal communications cease. In a propagandized milieu, communications no longer take place in interpersonal patterns, but in patterns set by the propaganda organization. Now, you see, the thing is, it, it doesn't... Whereas before, you might go to the pub and talk to people. I noticed living in the UK, they actually took... Uh, they filled the pubs with music <coughs> and these flashing TV screens so that it was actually impossible to have a conversation. But now they have social media and uh, big tech, and big tech doesn't have to control everything you say. They control the context, and that's really how it works. Okay? In fact, it helps, you, it helps to let you have somewhere to sort of say your little thing, have your little vent, because then you f you know, perhaps you feel like you've done something, go home, go back to being slave again. There is action, but no interaction. As I have shown, the propagandi and the non-propagandi cannot discuss. Have you noticed how difficult it is to talk to anybody now? No psychologically acceptable communication or exchange is possible between them. It's, it's very categorical, isn't he? Finally, in large societies in which propaganda is at work, Opinion can no longer form itself except via the centralised media of information. Quote, no opinion is of any consequence unless it is first communicated to the masses by the vast media of dissemination and propaganda. And if it is not assimilated on a massive scale. Here we are facing structural changes. I would argue that it's slightly different now. It's more to do with who controls your information feed, who controls the algorithms which give you the idea of, of suggest things to, to go into your mind. Um, skipping ahead. One cannot speak of a crystallization of individual opinions. Rather, a vague, inconsistent, unformulated, latent opinion, which one might call raw opinion is transformed by propaganda through a true process of crystallization into explicit opinion you see this is a science and it's it's much much more like um explaining how a water mains system works than anything else see uh, as i mentioned once before the uh, as it all mentions in this book the for example the american army 
they have, they have manuals on this, actual manuals. I mean, if you've ever read an army manual, it's kind of dumb. You know, it's 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 like an IKEA map. You know, step one, step two, step three. You know, there, there, there's no way of mistaking any of this. There are manuals on on how to, on how to lie to to everybody. You see, you still don't think they would do it. You still think probably that you would be impervious to it. The reason you think that is because the propaganda is so efficient. Next page. Propagand uh, problems are made simple. Goebbels wrote, quote, by simplifying the thoughts of the masses and reducing them to primitive patterns. See that word patterns again. It's not only patterns, but it's actually the, 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 the roads by which it is possible to think or have any communication. You don't need to control the content. You need to control the road signs. It's more like you know, directing traffic. Propaganda was able to present the complex process of political and economic life in the simplest terms. We have taken matters previously available only to experts and a small number of specialists and have carried them into the street and hammered them into the brain of the little man. End quote. I don't think you'd be allowed to say little man anymore. Everyone's amazing. And they're all unique, except they're all pretty much identical, but unique and amazing. Next page, 207. Private opinion clearly becomes devalued where public opinion is organised by propaganda. The more progress we make, the less private opinion can express itself through the mass media. The development of the radio and uh, press has considerably reduced the number of people who can express their ideas and opinions publicly. So, uh, what I would say is that it, with the advent of the internet, I mean, there was a sort of Wild West period where things were pretty, you know, pretty up up for grabs. And But now it's it's become um, much more manicured and micromanaged and corporate. And so it's it's to do, I suppose, with, um, with reach. You know, you have a, certain channels will be promoted beyond their merits. Other channels will be uh, basically squashed and I think that's large the way it works. All right, skipping another bit. This is a section called From Opinion to Action. Only very rarely does opinion by itself lead to action. The great feat of propaganda is to cause the progression from thought to action artificially. Now, just briefly, to talk about you know, the, the, the Romans, for example, uh, they would uh, consider that a man... A gentleman shouldn't work. Now you read that, you think, oh, oh, they're really lazy. No, that's not how it works. That would work. And we have it in the Russian language, for example, rabotit. Uh, rabotit comes from the word, was related to the word rab, which means slave. So if slaves worked, but uh, men of leisure acted. They would act, they would act, they would decide to do something and then do it. That's the difference. And that's the difference between essentially um, a villain or vassal or slave and a master is somebody who chooses consciously to act Pro what propaganda does it makes slaves of everybody man ceases to be able to act skipping a bit to the next page seen in this perspective action is the result of a certain number of coordinated influences created by propaganda you see now this is when i say your mind isn't your own you hear this you think ah oh, sam you, you know you're so arrogant it's nothing to do with arrogance it all is just explaining to you how this machine works and as i've said before if people said you know what my mind isn't my own i i don't have power over it because i am so uh, influenced by propaganda that I really am not capable of making a rational and informed decision. That would be a real major breakthrough. Propaganda can make the individual feel the urgency, the necessity of some action, its unique character. Yeah, for example, <coughs> excuse me, what do you think um, virtue signaling is? All those people walking around with completely pointless masks on, thinking they were saving the world. Um, oh, now you've got Europe, of course, which is destroying itself, um, which seems to be, I think, the only point, one of the goals of this war that they've started in Ukraine. Um, 
because you know Europe has been destroying itself. I mean, consistently, certainly all of my life. I don't see any reason why it'd stop now. Um, but you have to feel good about that. You have to feel that you're doing something righteous and good. And so, you know, Putin has been. I, I don't know. People, people in the West's idea of Putin is completely. I mean, it's totally divorced from reality. I'm not saying you know, he may be terrible, but how would you know? What do you ever? What do you actually know about him? Probably nothing. At the same time, propaganda shows him what to do. The individual who burns with desire for action but does not know what to do is a common type in our society. He wants to the he wants to act for the sake of justice, peace, progress, but does not know how. Yeah, I'll give you an example of those. These um very uh, gullible, silly young people who have been co opted by George Soros and people like him to stick themselves to works of art and sh scream and shout about things that they're, they think they're protesting against. That'd be a good example. If propaganda can show him this how, it has won the game. Action will certainly follow. Skipping to the next page, halfway down. If such truth, in inverted commas, quote, quote, quotations, dealt with eternal verities, it would not push the group into action. But at the same time as the mass media integrate to the group, they place it in relation to the presence. This is very interesting. You see, medieval man was concerned with eternal verities. He understood that he was born, he would die, uh, there would be a judgment. And he saw himself within the context of that sort of continuum. Modern man, highly propagandized man, and you know, obviously you could say, well, religion is a form of propaganda, but not in the sense that he was using this term, certainly not in the te technological sense. Modern man, um, if he's highly propagandized, never thinks about the future, he never thinks about death. He's never seen a dead body, he doesn't want to see one, he just wants to go shopping. And he lives in the eternal present, and therefore he's very easy to, to, to basically. Um, push him about, you know, and because he doesn't have any anchor either in himself or in his understanding of history, because he doesn't have one. Next page. And the group cannot judge its, uh, its own position. It can only act at that moment to, to participate in any group, whatever is to submit to actuality, to become a man without past or future, to have no concern other than action, no belief, other than that promulgated by propaganda concerning the present. And it's uh, amazing. I mean, it's, if you read, hopefully you have, 1984, for example, you know, they were always, had always been at war with whoever it was, Oceania or Eurasia. And then they forgot about it five minutes later. It's, we, we live, we've lived through it. I've seen it myself. Um, even now, I mean, supposedly people who care about the truth, they've forgotten about 9-11. They've forgotten that it's, actually, it's, it's physically impossible for 19 Arabs with box cutters who couldn't fly Cessnas to bring down three buildings in New York with two aeroplanes. And yet, they've just forgotten all about it. And yet, this is really important because, uh, not just because, you know, uh, what, what about the victims, but because it means that whoever did this is you know the real government and this is how they really operate i i don't know anybody even in the more alternative um res respectable alternative media who will mention it i think because <coughs> it's now um basically been elided from the narrative by dint of repetition so people just they they they, they know they can't win that battle because people's minds have essentially been uh hermetically sealed against it, and so they just shut up. Another bit. One can then say without exaggeration that propaganda replaces the leader of the group. This is not the banal assertion that propaganda is the instrument of the leader of the group or helps to make a leader. It means that in a group without a leader, but subjected to propaganda, the sociological and psychological effects are the same as if there were a leader. Now, doesn't this make a mockery of what you think of as democracy? I mean, I've always thought democracy is an insane idea. It doesn't make any sense to me. But, you know, if you're going to say that you believe in it, 
But if your mind's not your own, then all you're really doing is someone else is putting an X in a box using your hand. Skipping a bit. The leader is the one who leads his group to action. This is the second element of of the progression from opinion to direct action. As I say, Ilul is somewhat torturous and tedious to read, so I'm just trying to give you a, f a sense of it, and perhaps also an idea of the best way to read him, which is slowly and reflectively. Um, he, you know, he, he had, was a man of many talents, but the ability to write uh, easy-flowing pr prose uh, which would be you know, immediately accessible to a modern mind, uh, wasn't one of them. Propaganda and grouping. I'm just going to jump ahead. The partitioning of groups. All propaganda has to set off its group from all the other groups. Here we find again the fallacious character of the intellectual communication media, press, radio, which, far from uniting people, and bringing them closer together, divide them all the more. And I just, you know, I would invite you to consider how it's uh, working for you on online with all of your chat rooms and so on. All right, skipping ahead another couple of pages. Effects on the churches. I've got an extended bit I want to read here. Obviously, church members are caught in the net of propaganda and react pretty much like everyone else. As a result, an almost complete disassociation takes place between their Christianity and their behaviour. Their Christianity remains a spiritual and purely internal thing. <laughs> it doesn't affect anything they actually do. But their behaviour is dictated by various appurtenances and particularly by propaganda. Of course, a certain gap has always existed between ideals and actions. I don't know why actions are uh, in, in quotation marks. But today, this gap has become total, general and deliberate. This widening of the gap, particularly its systematic widening, is the fruit of propaganda in the political or economic domain and of advertising in the private domain. Because Christians are flooded with various propagandas, they absolutely cannot see what they might do that would be effective and at the same time an expression of their Christianity. I've got an idea. How about actually follow it? How about actually do something real? I, I don't believe, just as a person, you know, an aside, that what people want is uh, priests who, who want you to call them Jeremy and read from the New International Bible. I don't believe that's what people actually want i think what they i think i'm not a catholic but if the if the catholic church went back to a, a pre-vatican II position and started getting serious about heaven hell and sin m my guess is that they wouldn't wouldn't be wanting for for um, people to turn up on a sunday therefore with different motivations and often with scruples they limit themselves to one or another course presented to them by propaganda they too take the panorama of the various propagandas for living political reality and do not see where they can insert their Christianity in that fictitious panorama. He's great, isn't he? But he's kind of dull. Thus, like all the others, they are stumped. And by this fact, and this fact removes all weight from their beliefs. Uh, incidentally, um, Ilul uh, converted to Christianity uh, later in his life. I'm not sure which flavour. At the same time, because of its psychological effects, propaganda makes the propagation of Christianity increasingly difficult. The psychological structures built by propaganda are not propitious to Christian beliefs. This also applies on the social plane, for propaganda faces the church with the following dilemma. Either not to make propaganda... But then, while the churches slowly and carefully win a man to Christianity, the mass media quickly mobilise the masses and the churchmen gain the impression of being out of step on the fringes of history and without power to change a thing or to make propaganda. This dilemma is surely one of the most cruel with which the churches are faced at present. For it seems that people manipulated by propaganda become increasingly impervious to spiritual realities 
less and less suited for the autonomy of a Christian life. Well, there's some truth to that, uh, but my my position has been to take an uncompromising uh, position on everything. <coughs> and um, I don't think you should ever underestimate the power of integrity. And anyway, let's face it, the Christian church, it was didn't begin as a mass movement, did it? Anyway, let's skip ahead. How much more have we got? All right. All right, actually, I think what we'll do is we'll, we'll draw to a close the YouTube portion of this, and the rest of it will be on my Substack. Uh, details of where I upload to, how you can join my Substack and Telegram channel, support my work, and download my books free are in the description. Thanks for listening, and bye for now.